Hello. This talk discusses the transition from HTML in Emacs to Drupal, a content management system. This was a talk that I gave to the Boston Linux Users Group in August of 2009. I had been a member for some 10 years and had avoided giving a talk in that decade. Uh, but I thought that this would be of interest to the folks in the group. There were about 30 uh, to 40 folks in the audience, of which 16 ended up going to Cambridge Brewery afterwards. HTML in Emacs is a beautiful thing. And it's beautiful even if you do it in VI. Because HTML was designed for people. It's plain text, it's short and simple, and it is tolerant of faults. This was designed for physicists to quickly put together papers that they could share across the world and they wanted to be able to remember what they needed to do and not worry obsessively about the details so it would work no matter you know even if you didn't complete all of the tags. In fact, the language that it came from was not tolerant of faults, and I think that was a major improvement in the markup language. So an example of this is a website I've maintained since 1997, and what it looks like is a whole bunch of links. And during the, uh, an a seven year period, all I did was when I figured out something new about this type of math that I'm into, I would add a new link. It was quite easy to maintain and it was very robust. I did get a little fancy in 2004 by using custom style sheets. Uh, and now the reason now that is uh, used is so that everything has a similar look and yet it starts to get into the details of browsers how Internet Explorer works versus uh, Mozilla and Firefox it's not stuff I'm particularly interested in and it's certainly a step away from the HTML design but once I had my style sheet set up I could get back to my s system of just adding new links but HTML really is not designed for a community because group card participation involves deciding who gets to do what and where. So if you have, and when you have a community, they'll ha have several different ways they want to interact. They might want to have image galleries and videos and forums and blogs and this, that, and the other thing. And HTML isn't really designed to present those different things, you know, the, 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 those kind of seven different ways uh, to, to do content. It's a limitation of the approach. So in this talk, I'm actually going to go through two websites I've designed for two different sorts of communities. The first community is my condo. And there'll be two sorts of people who stop by there. One is potential buyers. Want to look the place out, get a sense of the, the lay of the land, get a sense of the lay of, of, of a particular unit. What are the rules? And for the residents, well, they're going to want the rules and say meeting minutes and things like that. And I also set up a research site, uh, which is really for nerds and uh, possibly uh, funding if, uh, if I get lucky. So to design a website, I highly recommend sketching on paper. And the reason is that it is very fast. You can quickly start adding all kinds of content. And even if you don't actually implement it, that's OK. You're just using things on paper. You're throwing out ideas. Put out as many ideas as you can that might be relevant to 
the website and then you can just prune. And you also can look at organizing options. What should go where? What goes together with what? As you do that sort of process, you should really make a note in your mind or actually probably on, on the paper itself about what will never change. That certainly could be an HTML sort of thing. And if that's true of your entire site, hey, you're, you're fine with HTML. But if things are going to definitely change once a month or even change daily, those are important things to note and those are going to take kind of uh, this uh, more thought about how you get that information into your website. But your website is definitely going to involve all three of these uh, sorts of elements and they'll just have to be approached in different ways. Then you go and you collect this content. And I found that that is a slow process. For my condo, I had to get images, I had to get videos, I had to get PDFs, I had to transform docs into HTML, and since I'm not working on this full time, that took two or three months. And for my research website, that took, uh, that, that took a comparable time, if not even uh, a bit longer. So, I mean, your website is supposed to display content and just admit to yourself, that it's going to take a good block of time to get that. Then you've got options for your content management system. I am going to discuss Drupal, but there's also one called Plone. There's a Joomla, and actually there are about a hundred others, and they're actually listed at this location, PHP dot open source cms dot com and every single one of them is easy to install use and extend or at least that's what everybody claims who is trying to promote their uh, content management system now Drupal happens to be the most widely used and because of that it means there is lots of documentation there are a number of books there are webcasts and there are a lot of strong opinions about whether it is a good content management system or a lousy one and at least with from my experience I can tell you I have a love-hate relationship although I definitely am biased towards the love part so if you decide to use Drupal, you will have to make an investment in learning it. And I think the biggest jumps involve learning their lexicon. They've got things like books, which are really kind of a hierarchy of things, and nodes, which is kind of the core little kernel of data. There are views, which are like ways to actually do SQL queries. And you really have to have a, a good um, notion of what all those Drupal words really kind of mean in order to uh, start uh, constructing the site. Uh, and I found it was, it was really kind of tricky to figure out what stuff was in a Drupal administrative web page, what was controlled by templates, what was really controlled by modules, what was something that was uh, controlled by MySQL. So, of course, I bought my half dozen or more books. A lot of these I got from PacT Publishing, which has an interesting angle of making sure that some of the money goes back to the open source project that the, the, um, that the book is, is kind of describing. And... I also found a uh, educational uh, DVD, and it was Drupal Essential Training by Linda at Lindel.com, and I found that was actually even better. The reason is that this is very kind of GUI-based kind of system, and as such, it really helps to see somebody, you know, pull up a particular address. 
hit on a particular link, go to a particular part of a web page, click on that, change one value, and have ha and see the effect of said value. So that sort of kind of clicking through a GUI thing, it really helped to have a uh, training that was m that was more like it. So I, I found that that was definitely worth the money. That's not a freebie, um, but there actually are freebies out there. There there are webcasts, and they also are worth looking up for for very similar sorts of reasons. So. The only like three websites I actually use uh, to, to kind of really work work things out is the Drupal.org website itself. Uh, but to actually get Drupal modules that actually have core functionality, I like DrupalModules.com because they have a rating kind of system. And of course, Google is a way to say if I've got this particular problem, and you will get problems. Look, here's a, uh, a blog that describes how they dealt with that issue. And let me, this is a bonus slide that I did not have uh, at the time that I gave the talk because somebody pointed out, well, who's your service provider? Well, they need to have PHP and MySQL, but even more importantly, they should talk about Drupal somewhere in their, you know, kind of marketing stuff to indicate that they have Drupal experience and they have dealt with the kinds of problems that can happen because Drupal involves several different technologies working together. I happen to host my two sites at DreamHost and DreamHost really is pretty dreamy in the sense that they have been very um, responsive in emails. Not only, I think this is what you've got to do, but, oh, we've got a wiki that describes this problem in a lot of detail, and you can go in there as for, for further confirmation. And the fact that they were writing down solutions in their wiki, their support wiki, I thought was a really positive sort of thing. And after resolving, I don't know, four or five kinds of little issues that I had, you know, I haven't had to go back uh, to to their support. It's kind of uh, up and, and pretty darn stable. I have put up a, a site on GoDaddy. It works. Uh, but it's not a pretty process. I, I, I can't stand the kind of marketing that they slam your head with. Now, when I gave this talk, I complained about backing things up, and I just want to say, hey, I found two great tools for helping you. It, in a Drupal site, you've got a MySQL stuff, and you've got a lot of uh, files that are you know PHP kind of uh, scripty sorts of things. So uh, those are two different things that have to be backed up. And so they're two different tools. One is a module called Backup and Migrate. And that works really nicely for MySQL. Yes, you can use you know PHP MyAdmin. Uh, and in fact, if you're very comfortable with that tool, go ahead and use it. And if you're not quite y there yet, Backup and Migrate will 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 do what, what you can do with PHP admin a little bit brighter because it'll say, hey, I don't need these cache, uh, cache tables and stuff. It'll be a, a little bit smarter about what to actually put into your download. And it also takes fewer clicks. So I think it, it really rocks. I think it's really a strong thing. And there is a new tool out there in the Drupal world called Drush, short for Drupal Shell. And you can just type in Drush update, and it will update all the modules. And that, you know, if you're into apt get update at the command line, you know that that's a wonderful thing to be able to just type in a short little thing, and it goes and does the right thing. It is a new tool, but I can tell that it's going to be supported by the people who are real Drupal wonks and will be a real aid in keeping things up to speed. 
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out to two different websites I have uh, and we'll kind of uh, look through these sites and get a sense of uh, what they can do and their, their strengths and, and, and limitations. So this is drummerfarms.com condom, uh, drummer for the Drummer Farms condominium. And my paperwork, a sort of a paper draft, led me to these five sorts of things, a welcome sort of thing, in and around Drummer to show pictures of, this, of, of the condominium, we the people, the governance kinds of issues, meetings, and the Gazette, a hard-hitting publication um, that we put out there. So the welcome page just has a few photos, you know, not too much, a little description of it. Oh, and here is a Google Calendar. Okay, why do we have this? Oh, so we can talk about board meetings. Now, there are Drupal modules that will do this. But this is just using an embed command from Drupal kind of calendars. The reason I went that way is because I believe that embed sort of thing from, from calendar is going to be stable over a long period of time. And then once I explained how to use Drupal calendar to the right person, they could just go and, and make these modifications themselves. When they made it in the calendar, it shows up here immediately. And I kind of like that, uh, that kind of approach for them being, putting in information um, as on the calendar and for it kind of lasting, all right? And okay, so, so that is the front page. Let's go in and around Drummer. So what we see here are a series of links uh, around, around the grounds, inside a unit, walking, video tours, a vendor list, and directions. This is officially called a book, uh, which we just, just, just kind of click around here to get to the next website. One of the things, I found it kind of hard to figure out the relationship between books and what's over here, because this is different. This is a menu. Of course, it's got the same kinds of items, and so it's required a little bit of duplication, but um, that's the way it goes. So here we see a picture of the grounds and um, some, some more photos down there. So let's just click on this. What happens? <gasps> Ooh, look at this slideshow. Now, this involves a... Uh, uh, what is it? <laughs> JavaScript and uh, CSS stuff. And I didn't have to figure out any of it. Okay. It's called a uh, Lightbox 2. And it's got these arrows. It's got uh, captions. It's got a pause. It's got a get out of my way. It's got this diminish the background, look cool kind of thing. And I didn't have to figure out any of this. Let me just pause it for a moment. Uh, you could definitely do this yourself using, as I say, JavaScript and custom style sheets, except it would take a lot of work. I just used the module. And then I had to figure out with the module how to call it. Yes, I did have to figure out some texty things in order to make it work but uh, that's that was it and so I you know I've heard stories about people saying they've spent months just trying to get something that looks like this all right now uh, and these things down here they're exactly the same slideshow they just start in different locations okay so this is what slide is this this is slide 17 7 all right um, but it's kind of a visual design thing such that, you know, you don't have to hit the slideshow to get a sense of, oh, they're going to go by the mailbox go, and go down to the pool. All right. That's it. Uh, I do have the directions for there and we can just go and see inside a unit 
and it's the same thing. There's my basement. Okay, we could take a look around the basement, but you know we've got this slick, at least for 2009, uh, looking uh, way of presenting images. Well, where do we go next? Walking video tour. All right, so again, this is for that one audience of potential buyers. And uh, let's see, let's just click on one of these. Here what it says. Oh, oh, we have nice classical music. All right, let's just, that's my wife, by the way. Um, here again, I could have used modules to kind of manage this sort of thing and put it on my w own website but then I would have had to pay the cost of uh, all the bits flowing through my from my website uh, to this potential buyer by using the embed command uh, well I get some branding with YouTube people feel warm and fuzzy about YouTube and that's a good thing and I don't have to pay for pumping out this five minute video to people I should say that particular tune uh, was um, had did have copyrights that allowed me to put it up on this website without any problem. S I give them credit basically at the end of uh, of the uh, video as they requested. So I here again I recommend using um, using that embed command and avoiding modules if you can. All right, so let us look at directions. And as you might expect, given what I've said before, that looks like Google. Okay, so there it, there it is. There's the condo. All right. Um, all right, we the people. So this is the deed and bylaws, what you call really boring, long documentation, okay? Well, we've got the board of trustees and the, the management companies, things about insurance, uh, but the handbook. Uh, make it so you can download the whole darn thing if you want to. <laughs> but if not, uh, what is a condominium, for God's sake? It's where you live, you idiot. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but that, you know, that's going to sit here and not change like forever. All right. Now let's go to meetings. And here again, we see the calendar. It's, well, it's a little smaller. It's like, uh, why did I bother again? Uh, oh, it's over here, actually. See, because uh, owners log in. To read the minutes so this is why we want to have a login to have information that is not shared with every single person on the web okay so let's just uh, do this Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I shouldn't do that. All right. So, what has changed here? Well, it looks pretty similar. <gasps> oh, look at this. We have all the minutes all the way going back to 2007. And you can see some of the kind of power tweaking that you have here. Why isn't this rolled out? Well, I because I decided to hide that one. I decided to push this uh, to open this one up. Now, if I click on this, actually, I think well, it'll just take me there. Actually, we're in edit mode, so um, editor mode. So, and we can just go ahead and look at one of these things. And so, of course, once a month, I have to add add this, and I cannot show you all that su kind of stuff without getting in trouble with my condo association. So I won't. But it, it does show you some of the um, power of uh, putting all this stuff uh, up on the web. 
And there is the Gazette, which is this really hard-hitting journal. And uh, when you when you start looking at this, you go, okay, so why exactly did I need Drupal? Well, to be honest, almost any content management system would have worked. Uh, why? Because the content here is not that complicated. All right, there's this theme that I'm using here. Well, lot, every content management system has themes uh, that allow you to like have these. These are now uh, what what uh, JavaScript and CSS kind of things. I don't know how to do them. <laughs> I could take a real close look and how it's done, but I don't want to do take a good close look at how it's done. I just want it done. So a lot of uh, every content management system is going to have this user kind of uh, login sort of thing, and those usually are set up so that it doesn't take much work. I should say in Drupal's case, it really takes incredibly little work. What happens when uh, somebody uh, creates a new account is I get an email that says, oh, just hit this link. That'll bring you to the admin page. You check one box, you're done. So it's very efficient. But let's see what an where an admin will spend their time. Let's go to, whoops, wrong page, sorry. Firefox, no, 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 what are you doing? I don't wanna do that. Oh, it says open file. Darn it, cancel this. Um, I want to open a location. So we want to go to drummerfarms.com slash admin. And this page usually does take a little while to load because it's got to do a lot of thinking. It's got to say, what do I know about? And let me go to MySQL and figure out what I understand and we have all of these things okay so there's content management so these are the th the kind of nodes that you create book nodes and comments and content and uh, thing called taxonomy there's site building biggest things there I think are the uh, modules because um, once you choose your theme you're kind of uh, keep it for a good period of time views is also very important uh, that is kind of ways of doing SQL queries there's user management which you basically once you set set that one up you don't touch it too often site configuration of course is very important early on and then uh, in a lot of ways you just let that go reports the probably the most important one is the status report uh, let's just to go ahead and take a look at status reports. We'll bring it up. Um, but you can see there are actually a lot of things to know about. And you really do have to know what a block is and how to do some basic things with blocks and menus and basic things to do with menus and, and, and that kind of things. You really do need to, to learn quite a bit. Um, and there are all kinds of things that are in the site configuration that you you need to be concerned about. As you see, it keeps on going on. So let's get the status report, see how things are going. Um, okay, I can run. Uh oh, let's go and run cron manually. See see how it's feeling about things. I thought I had a mo module, poor man's cron, that was supposed to be doing this sort of thing. Last run, 40 minutes. Eight seconds ago. That's not long, that long ago. Why, why are you complaining? Okay. Um, oh, look at that. Drupal core update status. I need to install this sort of thing. And 
that is one of my complaints about this software is that um, you really do need to update stuff quite often and that's always a concern because you update software and then this software no longer plays nicely with that software and that's a concern uh, but you know the the trade-off is that now you have all this power I mean I, I really didn't do m much work to get you know an ability to to, to manage users a and really the, the amount of uh, kind of level of detail with user management about what they can see what they can do is really quite impressive um, and so well worth it so that's my sense of it all right so as I say Drupal was the content management system I happen to use here and other than maybe Lightbox 2 which probably other um, other content management systems have similar kinds of galleries perhaps they even use the same software they just figured out how to use it with their their own own site uh, there's really kind of no fundamental reason why you had to go with Drupal and not one of the other hundred now here is my research website it's called visual physics and guess what I'm using the same theme <laughs> oh see we've got these we've got these uh, these these sorts of uh, menus and but you know it doesn't look like uh, that one at all uh, this it's got a very different kind of look to it just all the it's all very visual so uh, we go let's see which one should we uh, which one should we look at I see let's see what's on two what's on two oh that's kind of neat oh though I think I saw it I think I saw a putty cat. Yeah. So let's go look at this one. Yes. That's what you expect people to do. They just click on things. So it's got a title, signs and cosines over long periods of time in space time oh really all right um, so it's got a summary statement it's got a description and this amazingly enough is a sign and a cosine <laughs> right <laughs> so this is a ty complex plane this is a zt complex plane this is a TX complex plane. This is the animation, and uh, I don't know. Sometimes when I I'm just feeling down on life, I just come here and look at that and go, "Wow, math is weird." When you make movies out of it directly, um, and here is the command that created it. Ah, oh, this is uh, user hostile. <laughs> Here is the actual, uh, the, these things are um, math equations that uh, this is kind of dealing with. And Sage Notebook, okay, that's, uh, I'll show you what that is. But uh, this is actually one of my favorite things. Um, let's see who's going to show up first. Okay, so here are those numbers. All right, so do you see the patterns? It's like, oh, yeah, this becomes so obvious. <laughs> this is what, if you take, you know, about 5,000 numbers and you make a short film, you can end up with something that uh, looks just like this. All right. Um, all right. So, oh, and this, this is, um, this is Sage, which is a, um, a, ability to kind of do math on the web it's really kind of cool I think um, you can decide to to find functions and just kind of have it have it work on the web so the key thing here is that I've designed a data structure uh, this is called actually it's called I call it QA for uh, quaternion animations 
And that data structure has a lot of information. Actually, let me, I think this might bring it up. We'll see. Um, and the key about that is that I can then present it in many different ways. So I designed this particular data structure. And as you can see, I've got different, I've got a title right at the start. The little red star there means that I have to fill in a title. And I can decide that when I'm defining my data structure. And so I have to have a summary. I have to have a description. And then I've got these images. This is the, the big image. This is the line image. And you'll notice at the very top of the page, I'm getting a random sort of thing. Why get a random one? Well, because I'm trying to drive interest in the website. And if you see that and say, what, how the heck, what the heck is that about? <laughs> well, then you can actually kind of start searching for it. All right. So um, that's what I call a linear, the linear sort of look of this thing. Um, then there is this small one, which is the one that appeared on the front page. And then there is this thing that's just the, uh, it's the superposition. There's the command, YouTube videos. If I've got a YouTube video uh, that uh, for, for a particular thing, iPod things. Uh, there's the math written in LaTeX. There's my Sage notebook. Um, I require that the numbers be shown. Uh, and then there are these things called tags. Um, so uh, let's actually take a look at the end publishing options, whatever. So um, let's just uh, go back. How do we do that? File, you edit, go back. All right. Well, anyway. What is that? Control B? No. I don't even know how to use a browser. <laughs> Let's go. Actually, let me show you this. I said uh, one of the reason to use Drupal is if you can come up with a complex data structure that you want to present in, say, m three or four different ways, or even more than that. Um, here, here's that same same thing, but I'm only using the title and the linear graph. So that if somebody wants to see third order polynomials, they can just now click on that and uh, eventually it'll bring it up and have a, a little description of what a third order polynomial looks like. Looks like a hot dog. All right, so um, that's how you create it and, and uh, there it is. All right, sort of thing. So what other sorts of things do we have here? Well, one of the things that gets people's attention are these things called slams. Okay, so what's a slam? Oh, slam is uh, saying something negative about something somebody else. Now let me just show you th this part over here. Work on strings is not a theory. Ooh. Refuse to put vital word theory next to the word that involving a technical yarn. Rebuilding physics from the tensors, not quaternions. On up. All right. Um, and what I found was when I gave this talk and I had this, this particular page up, um, people kept on watching this part to see if I said something really obnoxious, which <laughs> occasionally I do. Okay. Um, and... It didn't matter what I said. Every once in a while, uh, one or two people would laugh, and uh, they'd just go on. So I better like block that part of it. Well, actually, oh, maybe it's frozen. Oh, no, there it goes. Um, oh, I like that. Wrong ideas can be made arbitrarily complex. Um, a false vacuum is a false god. So uh, anyway, <laughs> things that move gain people people's attention, and that's good but bad when you're in the middle of a talk 
and uh, try it. So what's going on here? Well, these things are a type of uh, data, okay, where I've got my one-liner uh, kind of a category and who, who did it. And as you can tell, most of the site is done by me, all right? Uh, but then I've created a different presentation of exactly the same information. It just kind of cycles through at random those sorts of things, and I put it on the same darn page. <laughs> now, I could put it on any old page, but I worry that people will pay too much attention to that. Uh, but it, it serves uh, as an outlet here, actually. I mean, one of the great motivators for people to work on, on, on physics is not that they have something wonderful. It's just that they hate some other area, and uh, they've got some negative kinds of thoughts about that area of study and kind of this uh, this section kind of serves as that that outlet all right so uh, let me show you well downloads this is what we call a pretty boring page okay so you can make boring pages um, oh look at that I gave video tutorials I think that's going to be really big in the future is people just want to see a little screencast about how the heck you actually use this thing and um, and whatnot so I, I've got a lot of videos do I have a lot of videos oh I have a lot of videos over here in the tutorial section which again is basically another one of these things called views because it's a title and my YouTube uh, link if I got one and I really wish I had uh, a YouTube for every single animation I, I put out there but I don't you know there are limits to what you can do some of the power that is involved with you know other people investing huge amounts of effort to get things to work here are forums now forums the ones I'm actually uh, uh, the one I'm used to let me see if I can bring this up actually not here let me click over here um, the one I'm used to is called physicsforums.com. Let me just um, no, actually, let me just go there. This is the one I I actually made contributions to over over a period of time. So there is this one company that has kind of dominated uh, this market and if you see a website that, that looks kind of totally like this they're probably using the exactly the same thing did I hit the open button how embarrassing okay now we see the little thing moving and that indicates that it is making an effort to use the internet to retrieve information from a computer elsewhere all right so if you've seen something that looks like this then um, then you know that they probably use that same kind of software so um, I suppose I should read this at some point mm -mm, some of these alright so this was my big thread and you'll notice 68,000 views we trash everybody else uh, and in fact I would be going at it today except that they decided rather arbitrarily to close my webs uh, this thread down uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at this thing add one more kind of user and one of the strengths of this site is oh look at that pretty equation and this was you know a real advance in uh, in forms uh, the ability to write serious ass look and math all right boom 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 all right so this does not look exactly like that you know it's it's slightly changed all right but is it um, how does it compare well, I guess I haven't been obsessive at, at trying to make sure it looks totally like it that like that. Uh, let's look at this Goodwill Hunting experiment at Harvard to see what it looks like. So, 
So, oh, look at that. We have fancy looking math. And I think that's really wonderful. Somebody has figured out how to deal with, with all this stuff. Now, why it's not perfect, like this line, those would be pretty looking E's and B's, and they're not, I don't know. Uh, you know, it's not a perfect world. But it's, you know, certainly better than it used to be. Uh, it, anyway, it's very important for me to be able to, to write really formally, you know, look and math, as I've done there. And then we can see, you know, feet, you know, people writing back and forth. And so it's not all me. It's just mostly me chat, chatting away at um, in this location. So anyway, that's uh, that shows that forums can be handled uh, with uh, with um, gumption with uh, as they should be. All right. Finances. Let's talk money. And so if you sign up here, you can get, oh, a bumper sticker. Nerds know. So this, again, is a pretty standard website, uh, uh, web page. You know, it's got pictures. It's got, uh, you know, headers. And it's got paragraphs um, and that sort of thing. And, of course, we, we ask for donations. Uh, we ask for some money. Some We ask for a whole heck of a lot of money. And we we asked for seven figures. Okay, guess what? We haven't really made that kind of money. Ah, but we do have donations. Uh, again, this is an embedded thing, and um, everyone, of course, should click on that and um, start donate. And amazingly enough, actually, uh, I have th th this website uh, up since like March um, has not received huge numbers of um, of donations but it has actually done a few donations it has received a few donations which is to me pretty amazing in and of itself so um, so let's go ahead and look at the back end just a little little investigation of what's going on there so sorry we have to do admin All right. Oh, look at that. I've got to uh, update some things. I told you that was going to be the case. All right. Um, and the key thing here, I think, are these things called views. All right. So what are views really? Views really are SQL queries. Okay. Nothing more, nothing less than that. Uh, and I get to... Uh, call them different sorts of things uh, the slam dunks of course but let's go look at um, let's go look at the mini this is this is end up end up being my um, my home page I just kind of said hey my home page is this view so let's just look at that oops I actually went to the home page that wasn't bright of me Oh, and I can't remember how to go back. So, do, do, do. and I've got to click the open button. All right. Boom, boom. Views. All right. So, here's my list. Oh, that's the path. I clicked on the path, which wasn't the right thing to do. All right. So let's just go over here and go edit. See, I can clone. So if I've got something that's close to what I need, I just bring that one up and I do slight modifications. All right. Great. So we can see you start over here. This is this is the defaults. Okay. And... Um, I, it's set up as grid. It uses fields. Oh, pager. Look, you don't have to figure out pagers. You just say yes. <laughs> How many per page? Believe me, you can spend a huge amount of time 
using, you know, various, uh, what do they call those things? Uh, you know, Yahoo has one, Google has one for dealing with CSS and whatnot in order to figure out how you want to slice and dice things up. Uh, here, I just say I want to use a pager and I want 10 per page. That's kind of, to me, pretty simple. Um, so these are the basic settings. Do I want a header? Do I want a footer? All right. Um, and then there are these things over here. Filters, totally important. Like one that you always set up is published. Yes. Yes, published. Um, and the fact that this works on just this one type of node, Quaternion animations. Okay. Uh, then we've got a, a sort criteria to organize things. These are the two fields I want to use over here. The uh, title field and the linear sum summary field. This, has got, uh, this is a, a tool that has undergone huge amount of um, development. And because, for example, this is all very Ajaxy, Ajaxian. Um, and we hit the preview, and that's what it's gonna gonna kind of look like. And if I look look at the SQL, <laughs> do you want to figure this out? I know I don't want to figure that out. I mean, it's impressive that it just writes it there. So it said, "Oh, yeah, I yeah, I think I would have done it that way. Uh, I would have done that left join just like that." No, uh, I really. Oh, and it didn't take long to do. But it reports that, which is also pretty impressive. Um, and just to bring it up. So so this shows the, the power of this interface. I mean, that looks pretty complicated. Th this was, this conceptually wasn't hard, you know, title and that linear thing. But executing it really requires that level of detail. And that's hidden for me. I mean, I think that really rocks. That rocks the house. So I think that's a very good thing. So um, I should say that these views are something that they've written a you know a book just about uh, doing Drupal views. And if you're doing more than three or four views of the same kind of central core uh, thing or your central core data structure, or you've got something that is going to have many, many different sorts of views in your opinion. And remember, if your views are extracting certain bits of data from your MySQL database and then presenting um, that in a particular order or uh, whatnot, the views are, uh, it'd be worth it to get that book on views. So, I just want to say, like, I've seen Drupal in my own kind of exposure to it really take uh, big advances in the time that I've been playing with it. And that's the quality you expect from an open source project that is being actively developed by folks. I mean, I saw a similar thing happen with GNU Cache where it was like, wow, I looked at it and it was like, oh my God people use this thing and like six months later it was like wow but uh, it, it it was really comparable to quicken in my opinion and I still use it to this day because I didn't like uh, quicken you know changing the data structure behind me now these guys almost seem a little too fast they've uh, were were uh, they're supporting Drupal 5 they're moving over to Drupal 6 they're working on Drupal 7 it's like I kind of like the idea of being able to put up a website and keep it there for like seven years, <laughs> which I have done, okay, in the past. Uh, but these people are moving a little faster than that. And, for example, that's why I have that impressive slideshow. Uh, but here we have this one website, and I know I've got at least four different angles at looking at the same kernels of, of data. Now, it means that putting in new kernels of data does take quite a bit of work, um, but then it automatically connects to those four or five different views without me doing anything. So I think Drupal becomes worthwhile if you really do have a community 
And at the current time, I don't have one in, in, in visual physics. I mean, I don't have four or five people that are always coming here and always uh, writing up new animations. That hasn't happened yet. But I do have the structure such that should they decide to try and, and, and use this software, uh, they can, okay? Uh, even so, when I come up with a new animation, it's going to go to, to, you know, to all these different places, places automatically. And that's really kind of feels, feels empowering. Uh, the, the, having the forums there is, is, is really nice. The, the, those forums, by the way, were not the default ones that come with Drupal. I found that those forums were too simple, and that's why it's called advanced forums. It, and if you like throw like <laughs> a whole bunch of different modules at it, it starts to become comparable but not equal uh, to what you get at uh, with the software that Physics Forums uh, happen to purchase. Uh, but I, I I think it does a, a just a very workable and, uh, and and I really kind of uh, like it for for the forums part. So um, overall. It's been more love than than hate. Uh, the uh, the hate part probably comes in in doing the updates. But as I say, I've I've discovered two new tools now that are make me a little bit more excited about that. Um, the what is it? Backup and migrate and Drush are both going to help considerably in those kinds of areas. And um, I just feel very positive about this content management system it's um it, it really looks like it's it's here to stay and if you give it a try uh i wish you much luck uh let me just uh close that one up and uh let's see what is it and go to the last slide yes so there's some uh personal stuff about me and uh this webcast is under the creative commons 3.0 you should attribute uh this work to me if you decide to use a, a little bit of it it is non-commercial so you cannot sell it um and i thank you very much for listening bye bye